you know what you should do? You should go over to my social media page, like either my Twitter or maybe my Facebook or my Instagram. It's my name, Goliath Flores, at all of them. And check out some of the stuff that I'm peddling. Uh, you know, I make, uh, I'm creative all around, and I would love for you to visit a website called linkshirt.net. That's linkshirt.net. And uh, I have some shirts that I invented there. And I also have some shirts at amazingshirts.net. And uh, I would love for you to check those out. Those are for kids. I have those under that, under that URL right now. But they're Amazing Shirts Kids. And um, also linkmerch.us or linkmerch.org. Either one will take you to the website Linkmerch. And I would love for you to give me some feedback on any of those. And my guest today is Mike Bernos. Mike Bernos has done more things than I can describe to you right now. He's had like an advertising agency. He's been an owner of an advertising agency. He's done PR. He has a band. He's written a book. You know, uh, he's a good guy. He's a good father. He's a good all around guy. Good all around guy. And here he comes. Uh, we have a conversation. It's our first conversation on my podcast. The Umbrella Corporation. Our business is life itself. This podcast episode is brought to you by nothing. Try it for free. We're live. You ready? I am ready. Here. All right, we're here. Great. Yeah. How are you doing? Man, I'm doing really good. I got Mike Bernos in the house here. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Bernos is uh, from a, a Italian family. No, 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 man. No. Uh, I'm sorry. I, 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 my name is Guido. Guido, I'm here from New York City. Someone said, come down and do the show. I said, yeah, come down and do the show. I'm getting better to do. I've been quarantined for two and a half months. I'm going crazy, you know. So he said, go down and do a show with uh, Goliath for us. So I said, I'll come down and do the show. That's great, man. I'm glad I'm glad to have you here. Hey man, I'm really glad why, to be here too. Why do why do you think Italian people talk with a raspy voice? Uh, it's probably from all the uh, spicy marinara sauce they eat. <laughs> no, I'm seriously curious. You see like an Italian movie and you hear a, even a woman. Yeah, She'll yeah. be like, hey, let me get this. Yeah, and it's, it's a stereotype. Is it because everybody's yeah, yelling? Yeah, yeah. You know, ever since uh, Marlon Brando said, I love America. America's been good to me. Yeah. Everybody wanted to be like Marlon Brando and yeah. speak like that. But hey, you know, I'm glad to be here with Goliath Flores. By the way, I heard your show the other night on public radio. And the... the thing that came to mind to my mind was if the great Nobel Prize winner in literature Gabriel Garcia Gabriel Garcia Marquez mm -hmm. was a singer he'd be Goliath Flores mm -hmm. your stuff is good Goliath that's great thank stuff, you so man. much man yeah. you know I'm not I'm not familiar with the guy but yeah. uh he's a great writer. surrealistic yeah writer um it was really big in the sixties and the seventies, you know, as people were expanding their heads and uh sort of that uh mysticism, surrealism. But good stuff. Time in the love in the time of cholera and uh one hundred years of solitude. Um What what era is that right author? What era? I, you know, he's in uh the sixties and the seventies. Okay. In the eighties. And uh great author. But you know the 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 Latin authors uh, are just have just fertile imaginations, and they wrote with a certain amount of surrealism and uh, mysticism, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just really good stuff. But um, you know, your music evokes that same kind of feeling. You have you have this uh, real um, ethereal, at least the stuff that I've listened to. It's been really really good. But I enjoyed that show the other night. Thanks, man. Yeah, it, man. It, it's very. Um flattering uh always when i hear you know good compliments from my music because uh you know when you're yourself you're just doing what you do mm -hmm. you know and uh but part of the reason a big part of the reason why i got into music is because uh of how it affects people because mm -hmm. how, how it affected me as a kid yeah you know so yeah. I, 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 that's what got me one of the things that got me into that on to that trajectory yeah you know 
but you you know you have a band yeah, I and do. you do music you do yeah. all a lot of different kinds loosely of music called work. a band but it's a band you do a lot of different kinds of music work yeah 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 and uh, yeah. um so what, what's your favorite like it's the greatest high it's the greatest high other than doing drugs right music i mean it's just it's yeah. amazing yeah uh, i'm not crazy about drugs yeah me neither yeah but uh you know uh music is like just the portal into uh yeah it's closer you're ever going to get to uh to sp- creativity is the closest you're going to get to God, in my opinion. You know, when you're being creative and you're making that connection, you connect every, you, you, the whole world's really connected. Spirituality. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, it, it's such a mysterious thing yeah. to create, and you, you don't know, you don't even fully understand it yourself when you're creating. Right. Do no, you? I mean, do you? No, I don't understand. I mean, I, I just think that it's, uh, I'm just so happy that, uh, you know, it's what keeps me going. I mean, if I live to be 100, I hope to be creating till I'm 100, you know? Yeah, yeah. And what would I be doing now if I, I mean, this time of quarantine, right? Mm-hmm. Loving the time of quarantine. Yeah. What would I be doing now if I wasn't, you know, playing music and writing music? I mean, there's no sports. Uh, I mean, it's jerk mate, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, th- that gets old, too. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, what I, I heard someone say the other day, you know, uh, you know, to beat the coronavirus, you have to have a great immune system, mm. you know. And they say orgasms are very good for, this, for the immune system. Yeah. I decided I'm going to beat this disease single-handedly. <laughs> That's pretty good. Did you just come up with that right now? I just came up with that. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, There's a pun in there and everything. A pun in there and everything, yeah. The only thing that's not in there is a dollar bill. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, um, yeah, this is, uh, you and I were talking, this is an unprecedented thing that's happened Uh with us. Uh Uh, It's never happened in the history of the modern world, Uh what's happening now. And the implications of it are larger, I think, than we can imagine right now. Oh yeah, the society is going to be forever changed after after we come out of this. But you know? when you say that, like when you say that, do you believe it? But the society is going to be. I changed? don't believe it. Like, you don't believe it. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I I understand. I understand the words yeah. that I'm saying. Like society is going to be different. Yeah. But I, I actually don't. I can't fathom it. Like I don't know what it's going to look like. Yeah. You know. Well, let's 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 let's, let's go back a ways and yeah. look at it this way. I mean, aside from the financial hardships that people are going through, right? But the government's, government's printing money faster than, you know, than anything, any, any time in the past. They're just printing money. The printing presses are rolling as we're talking. And, uh, you know, they are going to put money out there, and they're giving it away. They're giving it away to a lot of people to try and keep this economy going. But uh, Like Harvard? Yeah, like Harvard and to <laughs> Ruth Chris Steakhouse and yeah. J.P. Morgan. Eventually, it'll get down to us, but, you know, but they got to get their hands in it first. But anyway... Uh, what I'm saying is that aside from the financial hardships, it's been kind of nice. I mean, the skies are bluer, the air is clean, there's not many cars on the road, people are jogging, people are, you know, more people are dropping dead jogging, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> people are, uh, you know, the baby carriages riding their bikes. It's just been great. And what I think, I think, you know, if we come out of this, this should be a great push to say, hey, you know, we got to lessen this grind of this, you know, work work day and and the way we do work in this country why not have it so that i mean more people are working from home and it and it proven successful so why not have it so that uh one week on monday wednesday and friday a certain group of people go to work and uh are you know stay home work from home and on tuesday and thursday go to work and alternate that and then you you take half of the cars off the road you know and you would have this kind of like vacation like feeling all year round which is kind of great i mean you're going to reduce your health care costs there'll be less stress i mean you can't tell me that people aren't less stressed right now yeah. i mean it's like one big vacation out there the europeans take a month off for vacation every year well we, we give people two weeks right and uh <laughs> one yeah one week if, if you're lucky when you start yeah so i mean either working. either give us a four-day work week or alternate uh you know working from home i think i think the, the advantages and it would be terrific in terms of environmental, in terms of healthcare costs, uh, pollution, well, I just said environmental, 
and and um, the productivity is going to stay the same. It's been proven it'll stay the same. Yeah. You got to run for office, man. And no, no, no. You know everything you're saying uh, is like you're. I'm right there with you. Yeah. You know, and uh, and I hope that it's not. And I, I'm confident that's not just you and I. Yeah. I know that there's probably somebody uh, who's maybe listening to this who's like, "What the fuck are you guys talking about?" Somebody died that I know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you guys having, I'm, I'm glad you guys are having a great time. Yeah. I'm no. saying that because. No. I'm saying that because when you're talking on a medium like this, you're potentially talking to the whole world, right? You know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. You know, and the thing is, but that doesn't, that still doesn't um, nullify the fact that what you're saying is true. Like if it's not affecting you, yeah. Uh, the 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 positive parts of it in my life are very similar to yours, right? I'm relaxed. I don't feel this tension on my shoulders all the time. Yeah just this hitting the ground running the grind man it's the grind yeah exactly the grind let, let me ask you this uh we have a s- s- five day work week right and is it because you know sunday is a day of rest because in the bible they said this god is, this is the god time, rested on this the, is the point in time in history yeah. where this is a good question to ask yeah okay it was uh, do we just blindly <laughs> follow things for two thousand years yeah. because someone said in the bible sunday is a day of rest so Sunday comes around, we all go to church, we rest, and we dread going to work the next day. You know, more heart attacks occur on a Sunday night. That's the mo- the, the time, the day, in the evening. More heart attacks occur then because people are stressed going to work the next day. Imagine if you had a four-day work week. So Thursday becomes your Friday, your Friday night. So you now have Friday and Saturday just a have a blast or relax or do whatever you want and then when sunday comes around you go oh okay it doesn't have the stress that the five-day work week has i'm telling you if we don't change this whole system up and why because two thousand years ago said sunday is a day of rest (laughs) you know yeah i mean yeah no i hear you i hear you there's here's the thing i guarantee you that a, a lot of people agree and feel the same way but the um, the thing about it is that why doesn't how and why does it not get implemented? It makes perfect sense. Well, because I, I think that you got to have something, some kind of uh, you know big event like we're having right now to create change. Because people just kind of go along and go along and go along, and, and unless something really knocks them off the track. It's going to keep going along because we're all we're all just riding the same rails. And but I, w- I want to point something out here that there are, there are those who change. They say you have to change with the times, and there are those who change the times. Yeah. So, but people act like the times change just by themselves, and they do. But it's not usually the case in our society. Usually, it's somebody who's making a decision somewhere, and they decided for us. You know, and uh, and then another person reacts to that decision. So there's people that are changed in times, and um, right now would be a perfect time to go to a four day work week. It'd be great. You know? I mean, I think we'd see huge changes in healthcare costs would come down dramatically because first of all, you would have so many people having heart attacks on Sunday night. <laughs> right. And, Monday uh, morning. Yeah, and 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 um, you know, I, I'm just thinking about. For example, uh, more people could get out in the sun and um, and enjoy themselves. And I'm trying to make a uh, uh, I'm trying to make a jive at uh, with, with what our president said the other day about we could kill this disease if we get sunlight in the body. Yeah. Matter of fact, you came up with a T-shirt, right? Yeah. What's that T-shirt say? I love that T-shirt. It says uh, it says put light into the body. Yeah, said, said yeah, put yeah. Light, that's a that's a put pretty the light into the body. That's a pretty dark body there, man. That's yeah. a, that's pretty, that's a black hole there. Yeah, I think it'd be hard yeah. to get light in that body. But anyway, yeah. But it's a great, it's a great, it's a great yeah, double the t- entendre. The t-shirt is, uh, yeah. it's it's got an ominous look to it. Yeah. At this, or it's like a just, you know, but it, it's got something that's kind of vague. Yeah. On it, so. Yeah. 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 It's Maybe I'll I like show it. it to people on here somehow. Yeah, you should. You should do that. You know, yeah. You should buy that t shirt. That's a good t shirt. Yeah, you should buy that t shirt, please. Yeah. That would be great. No, I, I you know what? <laughs> I think it's a great meme. Yeah. 
Anyway, yeah. um, so so yeah. as to what you're saying, I'll tell you. Uh, I'd like to impart something here. <clears throat> I was walking around last night because I've been doing that at night whenever I can. Walking around at night, it's late, like eleven, ten thirty p.m., and I'm walking around in the parks because it's so quiet and so peaceful. And there's nobody and there's no cars. And uh, and I was thinking to myself, what is it about society right now that um, what is it about that is my life that I like so much about this life? My kids are home. It's a lot of work. Uh, I, I'm struggling teaching them school. Fine. That's a difficult thing. Um, I'm not being pressured to do this. Nobody's in a hurry. People that I see are not in a hurry. They're um, with their families, riding their bike in the park, et cetera, et cetera. People are smiling. People in my neighborhood are not usually as friendly or anywhere really, but you say hi to everybody that you, you go past. Normally you just walk past them. And um, so all of the things that have changed in my life personally, well, first of all, my life has been affected less than a lot of people's because I'm a musician. And uh, because I, I'm a musician, that means I'm at home already a lot. So, but the thing is, I was thinking, how can I keep this going when things go back to quote unquote normal? Where would I have to live? How would I have to live? And what, am, what is this place offering me that I want? that I'm lacking right now, which is, doesn't feel like very much. And uh, so I think to myself, I'm basically living in the sticks right now. I'm living in the middle of nowhere because there's nowhere to go and there's nowhere, there's yeah, no gas, movie theater. Gas is a dollar fifteen. we got nowhere to go. Isn't that great? But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, right, exactly. That's <laughs> true. That's great. That's a great point. That's a great point. You know, and uh, that's a good for a song even, right? Yeah, so... Um, so you, uh, so we have, we have that, I have nowhere, there's nowhere to go, there's no movie theaters, there's no cool restaurants, there's nothing. So basically when you live in the middle of nowhere by the river or, or in nature, you have all of those elements and I'm having a great time. And I'm thinking to myself, maybe I don't need to live here. And, and I'm thinking to myself, this would be an excellent time to transition my family to a different place because it's like we moved. They're out of school. They're away from the friends that they've been seeing normally. I'm away from, like, everything's different, right? And this is something I'm really thinking about, and it's kind of scary that I'm thinking about it because it's such a big move, such a big change, you know? Uh, have you thought about anything like this? What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, it's, it's, a, it's a great point, and the fact is is that, you know, everybody's perspective is changing, and because the stimuli has changed, because what we're with you know the, the what we're experiencing now has changed so dramatically people are actually thinking differently and um you know you wonder is this the place you want to be because when it comes back to normal if it's going to be the same grind 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 i mean this has just been so pleasant and you say uh, there, there must be other. I think to myself, there must be other places in the in the world or the country where it's more like this. It's just not as much of a grind. Uh, I'm thinking maybe Santa Fe. I'm thinking uh, Taos, New Mexico. I'm just thinking, you know, maybe Asheville, Tennessee. Who the hell knows? I, I don't know. I've been to those places, but you know, um, I just think that. Um, well, look, we live where we live in in Jacksonville, Florida. Some people swear it's a great community, and there, there's a lot of natural resources here, but it's also a very uh, conservative area, and things are more status quo here and less likely to change. But fortunately, you and I live in a great community. We live in the Riverside District, which is a great walking neighborhood. You and I walk everywhere. Um, you know, there's parks everywhere. So we're fortunate. One of the things I think about is imagine if I was living in a gated community and, you know, yeah, you know, walking around my gated community and I walk two houses down from my home and don't recognize the people there. Uh, you know, it's just it's it's the, it's it's alienation. 
But here, there's a feeling, there's a less of a feeling of alienation because of there's a, it's more of a community setting. Not everyone's so isolated and secluded. Yeah, and there's the there's the richness of the the fact that every house has a different architecture. Oh yeah. And then there's yeah. the right. oak trees, and yeah. some of them are yeah. old, and some of them yeah. are broken, and some yeah. of them are strong and some of them are yeah, shaped like, yeah. weird you know it's it's it's, it's fabulous it's, it yeah. really is um and there's the river the, the river right? yeah the river's huge man you know um that's right uh yeah i you know look i, I hope that the return to normal is uh, a different type of normal yeah. to answer your question what changes that i think there are going to be some people saying hey man this wasn't so bad and it you know, maybe someone will, someone will come up in politics, a young mind, a young person will come up in politics and say, we need to start rethinking the way we're doing things. And now, you know, whereas in the past, if you proposed that and no one had a, an empirical experience to, to, to judge it against, now they've had that experience and they can go, oh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Why couldn't we have that all the time? A four-day work week where everyone's more relaxed, people are, roll, you know, riding and jo- biking and, I'm, you know, the community's more relaxed. I hope it happens. When I went to, when I went to the grocery store, and for the first time, I think in my life, um, I saw the produce section almost barren. Mm-hmm. That was weeks ago, right? Mm-hmm. But um, you know, it brought into over the next several days, it brought into me the thought: if there's no food here, where am I going to get food? It's the only place in the whole world I know where to get food is the grocery stores. Yeah. And that was like, wow. There's, a, there's another thing, right? Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that I want to go prepper, right, and buy a, a cache of guns and, and yeah. a, make, a, make a silo. Yeah, right, 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 right. But the thing is, uh, I also think that I'm too far yeah. from... We're all too far from uh, being being able to sustain ourselves, and but at the same time, I don't want to be a farmer. I don't know about you, man, but I got a, I got a bunch of stash of beans at my house. Come on by if you need some. <laughs> well, yeah, that would be great. I love beans. I you got know, a stash Mexicans of beans. love beans. Chicanos love beans, man. Yeah, well, you know, crazy Cajuns love beans. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Red that's beans right. and rice, man. Are you kidding? That's right. You're yeah. Cajun. I'm a Cajun. Yeah. S- yeah. No, man. I, I totally get it. You know. Uh, if this pandemic has showed us anything is how unprepared we were as a nation. Uh, and you know, this, this pandemic only has a 1% fatality rate. MERS that it broke out uh, 10 years ago, fortunately it was contained, had a 33% fatality rate. That's crazy. Imagine yeah. if that pandemic had hit, it would be a different story. So if this isn't a lesson to everyone from, you and I, to the politicians in Washington, to everybody, then we're screwed. Living in New York, right? Yeah. You know, I've never been in New York. You've been in New York? Yeah. Okay. Living in New York, what is that like right now? Let's yeah. say you got an apartment and, you, and you've been paying $1,000 a month yeah. and you got this shotgun apartment with a yeah. bathtub yeah, in your yeah, kitchen yeah, and yeah, whatever. Yeah, right, right. And it's like, and uh, what is that like? Yeah, I mean, you're Jesus, in a building yeah. claustrophobic, right? You know, I talk about claustrophobia. I'm very claustrophobic, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I once uh, dated a girl who lived in a beautiful, beautiful Art Deco building right down here. And I quit dating her because it was just an elevator. It was like, looked like a phone booth going upstairs. <laughs> and I would, I'd, I'd arrive at an apartment, cold sweat. She's, what's the matter? She, Are you doing drugs? I, no, 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 no. I just, <laughs> just can't handle that elevator. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. So, um, yeah, I mean, and you know, I, I, you know, oh, by the way, uh, anybody looking out there, uh, the camera, the distance, how's that thing say, uh, you know, distance between the mirrors uh, is closer than it looks. Well, it's just the opposite. The distance between uh, the cameras is actually farther than it looks. Uh, Goliath and I are doing social distancing. He's actually six feet away from me. Uh, yeah. The cameras just make it look closer. Yeah. But dude, I mean, we've been doing really good social distancing. I mean, I uh, I wrote this little uh, song the other day, and it, it went it went like uh, it went like I've been real good staying in the hood. The only thing I spread is a jam on my bread. 
Like most human beings, I've been quarantined for a while it seems. I hope the Prez does what he says and sends a check cause I need a little help. I ain't no socialist, but I hope I'm on that list. <laughs> I hope I'm on that list too. I haven't seen a check yet. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that I haven't, works, man. I, Yeah, I haven't heard from people like, oh, I got my... I actually, yeah. I did hear from someone. You yeah. got to deposit like right away. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, man. You know, uh, it, it's been interesting times, but uh, for creative people, it's been good. I've been mean, writing a lot of music, been doing some virtual concerts, and, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, the, it's been the good number, for the head. The number one thing that I've heard from people across all professions, okay, is this phrase. I don't know... It's hard to focus. That's hard what I, that, that's what I hear from people. It's hard to you know, focus. I, think, I think that's because people are so used to being distracted, they never focus in the beginning with. They're just like water bugs on the surface of life. They just go, boom, 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 boom. You ever see a water bug on a, on a on, you know? Yeah. You just, boom, 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 boom. It never, never gets below the surface. Yeah. And, and, and I think a lot of people are just, like video games, you know, you're you're just you're just darting from the next stimuli to the next stimuli, and when things break down and you got all this time on your hands, you go, "What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do?" Well, for those of like you and I who can sit down, write a piece of music, read something, you know, being with your own thoughts and being in silence and being quiet is not that alien of a of a concept. What? So things that I don't miss. Sitting in traffic. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't miss that. Right. Sitting in traffic. Yeah. Um, getting up in the morning, making the girl, my kids breakfast, getting them to school, rushing them out the door, rushing to school, yeah. getting them to school. Yeah. The teacher may be looking at me sideways. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, totally like, get it. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just, that, and that's just the morning. Yeah. That's just the beginning. Yeah. Right. Dropping off my other kid at, preschool the hustle and bustle saying hi to the parents dealing with the politics at the school with between parents and the social class issues and whatever might be going on and the sticks i'm living in the sticks and i like it you like it yeah i get and it I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of it yeah i'm I'll, afraid of, i'm afraid yeah, like i'm yeah. in the, i'm a closet stick liver right <laughs> right stick man yeah. where we came from to me is so unnatural and artificial Everything is so compressed and jammed together. One of the things I've noticed is that my wife works from home now. Okay, I'm retired, but my wife works from home. My kids at home. So and my wife used to get home from six. Get home about six o'clock. I'd have dinner ready for her. We'd eat dinner, and then you know, boom, got to get the kid to, you know, uh, he watch a little TV in the bath, getting ready for bed, and it's like everything's jammed up. Now, now one of the beautiful things I like is the fact. She's at home. Man, we eat like about 4.30, 4.30, 5 o'clock now. And we finish dinner. We can relax. Think about it. The time after dinner now, we can relax. My kid can relax, do a few things. Come 7 o'clock, he's ready, you know, he's ready to get ready for bed. Yeah. Whereas before, it's all jammed up. Yeah. It's all unnatural, man. We, you know, and we're living a life in a sardine can. No, really. Mentally. I call it a, um, yeah, I see what you're saying. I call it a hamster wheel. Well, you know, it's, it just doesn't stop. Yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, right. It's the grind. It's the, it's the what, yeah, right. It's the, uh, yeah, the hamster wheel. Uh, but, you know, stress, compressed, uh, whatever, is stress, compressed, duress, any of the yeses, you, we, we live in it. <laughs> duress, yeah. compressed, stress, it's all there in, our, in, our, in the lifestyle we, we, we just came from. Depression. <laughs> do you think that people can change it? Do you think it's going to change? And do you think people oh, can do anything? I hope it changes. I hope someone has, I hope a group of people, you know, and things change when enough people say they want it to change. It's like, it's like a, you know, what's the thing like this? Is tilts? <laughs> they call it the tipping point, right? Enough people get on board, you'll reach the tipping point and things I have change. Uh, something about what you just said. Something about what you just said. It'll change if people want it to change, right? or if enough people want to. This is very important. 
it's all important actually. But uh, this is something that just happened to me last night, this morning. And it's, um, I took out an ad for that shirt with Trump on it, that um, satirical shirt, which is, doesn't say anything um, offensive or, no. or anything like that. No. No offensive imagery, nothing. No. Um, so I took out an ad for, with Facebook and I, they, they told me that they couldn't put it up there. No. Yeah, because uh, I'm, I don't want to misquote them, but I remember this, reading this clearly and not necessarily verbatim. Uh, this may affect a political election. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I get that. And uh, yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I can't voice my opinion through a t- t- t-shirt. Yeah. Right. And I'm not even really saying anything. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying no Trump. I'm not saying fuck Trump. I'm not saying yeah. 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 anything like yeah. that. And, uh, and, um, so the thing is people aren't even given the chance to see this shirt if they want to buy it or not. Yeah. So aren't they affecting a political election by not letting the information that people are coming up with, like me as an artist through? Well, yeah, what you're speaking like what is, to is, uh, is, you know, uh, freedom of expression. If you, and that's, that's, so this is almost yeah. like, you know, I've said this for years yeah, right. that Facebook is a new government. Yeah. And when the first, when I first started yeah. saying it, yeah. Everybody, even some of the most intelligent people that I know in my life, yeah. were telling me that's retarded. Yeah, that's yeah, like, no, you know, no. they're like saying that's like ridiculous, guys. What are you talking about? I'm like, no, you don't understand. Yeah. Like, what you're saying, um, you know, like the Gestapo or the the Stasi, yeah, right during the yeah, yeah. Second World yeah, War, yeah. after Second yeah. World War, yeah. they can make you disappear. Yeah, right, right. And and so if so if, can Ben and Stiller, who? <laughs> Ben Stiller? No, Ben and Stiller. That's Who's the that? that's the the magic group. They can make you disappear too. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> Magi- I didn't know. I good didn't magicians know. can make you disappear okay. too. I didn't know. I didn't know about that. You haven't seen that, man? It's amazing. No, no. <laughs> Go ahead. No, but but the um, oh the 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 this platform can make you disappear. Yeah. Uh, if it's the only relevant place where people are gathering, right? So we have social distancing which means that we're not seeing each other in person, yeah. which means that we're only seeing each other online. Yeah. And if they make you disappear online, yeah. guess yeah. what? Like yeah. you've been made to dis- you've been disappeared. Yeah, I, I, I totally get it. But on the other hand, let's flip it around. First mm-hmm. of all, a corollary to what you just said is that uh, the new government of Facebook, those, contr- those who control the information control the power. That's a, that's a truism. So governments that want to control the power control the information, all the authoritarian authoritarian regimes have a way of controlling the information. Trump's been trying to control the information, the narrative, okay? But on the other hand, um, you know, I I think that Facebook is taking this viewpoint now that there's been so much fake news and fake uh, coming across that they're trying to call that out. And you just got caught up in the net because you're, to me, you're you're artwork. You're as no different than singing a song, you know, a satirical song yeah uh what's the it's the same thing artworks music to me that has merit because it's 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 expression it's not some contrived some nerd sitting in some back room you know creating a you know some virus it, it's, or, yeah, it's not it's not like you've created um a uh an ad that that uh is is purposely misleading right you know like on a, 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 a fake headline yeah. or having someone speak that looks like someone that 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 people may uh, you know accidentally uh judge as being mistake for someone else it's none of that so i i think that maybe the net has inadvertently unintended consequences caught you yeah and i appealed it we'll see where it goes yeah, yeah i told I mean, him hey i'm just an independent right? artist yeah because it also said, yeah. we don't want organizations, yeah. and we don't know if you're part of an organization. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, and I told them, uh, they asked me, they said that we needed to verify your yeah. ID or yeah. something like that. Right. And I'm like, fine, I'll do that. Right? I have a yeah. business that yeah. I'm trying to yeah. make right. happen, right. and this is part of it. Right. 
and there's no other way to go. Yeah. You Sam Harris said on his said it on his podcast. He hates Facebook. Yeah. Right. A bunch of people do. I don't like it. I hate it. Yeah. How, like, how does it feel to have a platform where people don't even want to be a part of it? <laughs> And they have yeah. to be a part of it. Like, I know. mean, yeah, you know, face. How is that not like yeah, a government, yeah. like a oppressive government? Right. Like, I don't want this government. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, and you know, I talked about that the other day. I mean, it's like uh, Facebook. I, I think you said it really well the other day. You said something like Facebook. Most of the people who come up with applications on Facebook seem to be creating applications, or even Facebook itself was born out of a sense of insecurity, out of personal insecurity. This guy Zuckerberg. Uh, was was a uh, was a nerd in college, and he, he was outcasted. He from was a, outcast. He couldn't get any dates. So the thing started really as a way of uh, showing women's faces and showing which ones, having guys judge which ones would quote dogs and which it ones. It was called were, face smash. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, so that that was born out of this guy's insecurity. Okay, and um, like you said, a lot of applications that come out of this are are, are, are that, that we see are, are born out of insecurity, and. Is you know that that's something to to think about the way that it's shaped the the online world. Mm -hmm. The internet was potentially was something different before Facebook. Yeah, and and then it was on its way to being something, and it wasn't defined yet as it is today. Right, and then this awful website because it's an awful website. Like, his in a sense hijacked the internet and shaped the internet for us and well, if you think of the internet people would say what you say what's the internet to facebook most yeah that's where facebook. most people's time is yeah, spent facebook right. and it, but when i say facebook yeah. i'm talking about yeah. facebook products because yeah, yeah. they own instagram yeah they own whatsapp yeah and they own facebook yeah right. um and uh so it's like um and god how many people would you know it's it's just become a uh, orgy of uh self-aggrandizement people putting their photos up there God, you know. Yeah, we can complain about it I, I for a long time. I, I, detest, I can. Yeah, I detest seeing people just putting. <laughs> I their, try not their to. Face it. It, it, it's become like an avatar. I mean, people just create their own avatar out there, and uh, it's like dating sites. You know. What do you? What effect do you think that? that do you see that having any long ter long term effects on society on people that they're creating like a, a parallel avatar? Look, I've I've met people in real life. And then the algorithm yeah. has, yeah. because maybe their phone yeah. number all of a sudden yeah. is in my phone now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The algorithm suggesting that we become yeah. friends yeah, on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. And then yeah. I meet them in real life. And then I'm like, is that, is that you? Because they don't really look like the same right. person. Right. And I'm, I'm 100% being sincerely going, yeah. is that, right. is that th that person? Because yeah. I, can't, I can't tell yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. No, no, keep, uh, Keep, oh yeah, keep talking. No, you gotta be. You gotta. No, 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 man. Keep going. No, I just fine. want. It's not a just, big deal. I want to text. Uh, text. Uh, oh yeah, my wife real quickly because of her. Uh, yeah. So so the thing talking. the thing that I was thinking about Get was uh, um. Yeah, that that the avatars. No, I, well, that was a question for you, but mm -hmm. the thing that I was talking about before about um the internet being shaped by mm -hmm. it, it and the by the interfaces right. Mm -hmm. Um. I have to go, kind of go outside of it a little bit in the sense that an interface, when you're looking at a user interface yeah. on a phone or a computer, you are, um, that is a psychological construct. If I give you a option to um, send a balloon off, <laughs> which is ridiculous, or to, uh, smash a scorpion okay if i give you those two options which you'd be like well, that's kind of ridiculous and those are the only two options i give you on these buttons and everybody's on there let's say everybody's on there and this is your it's going to shape your mind to that yeah. so if i give you an option of a yes button and yeah. a no button it's going to shape your mind if i give you a yes no and a maybe right it's going to shape your mind yeah. if i give you a yes no maybe exit yeah. it's going to shape your mind again how you lay it out what right content the user interface is working with yeah. yeah so the insecurity the theoretical because i don't know for sure right the theory the, the theory the idea that the the biography that i heard about and that i learned about mark zuckerberg is that he felt uh socially inferior and closed off so he sat in his dorm room or wherever he was 
and he worked on this program with this mindset that he was going through. So yeah. he made this psychological construct, which he then bequeathed to and and dispersed amongst everyone. And now everyone is being affected. You just read article after article about how Facebook makes people depressed and makes them feel isolated and it makes them feel like lesser than themselves because they're watching people right. live a life that is better than theirs. Uh -huh. And wasn't this exactly what this was happening to him when he created it, mm -hmm. right? This is just something, I, I don't know what to call it. It needs a name. Yeah. I try to give it a name like experiential diffusion, but it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of a silly th title, I guess. But uh, like, what is it called? He created this, this construct and it got dispersed among all of us. Yeah. It was, con you can say it's contagion, but it's not specific yeah, 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 enough. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good word for it. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, well, let me, let me follow up on what you're saying. Yeah. Because, you know, the, I, I'm going to circle back around to something you said earlier and it's something that, you know, you're doing with your life because, I mean, you have written a book about this very same thing. Uh, that are you in, are you ready to publish it? But also, some of your, um, some of some of your recent projects in entrepreneurship is dealing in a response to this whole thing. For example, as a musician, our lives have been um, intermediated by things like um, TuneCore, CD Camp, or whatever CD Baby. Uh, if we want to put our music there, we have to go through these arbiters. These people who intermediate for us, and they are controlling what we can put out there and how much money we make. Our lives are constantly being arbitrated by these third party third party forces. You, I think you've got a product or a company called Link Merch, yes. and you're trying. You're you're a perfect example of a sort of a antithesis or a response to that, trying to. Trying to disintermediate the disintermediators. <laughs> yeah, right. Trying to try to disintermediate the arbiters and get the middleman out of there. In simpler words, by creating this system where musicians can relate to their fans one to one without any third party agents in between them, using the internet minimal third yeah, party. Yeah. yeah, using the internet as a facilitator and not as a means to an arbiter. Yeah, and. Uh, I think it's great. That's right. That's an excellent way to put yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because that's totally true. Using the internet as a facilitator, not as an arbiter. Right. A bunch of middlemen in there right. in the middle. Exactly. Yeah, Th and that is. Uh, as a matter of fact, why don't you tell? Why don't you tell me? Uh, I, 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 I know you've mentioned to me a little bit, but well, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, don't want this to turn into an infomercial. But no, 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 no. Well, I mean, I think it's a great concept because I mean, it's in it's in the spirit of what people are reacting to. So what's yeah. your, your solution well, if was it to wasn't, do what? If it wasn't for that book that I'm working on called uh, Living Between Screens, right? I, don't, I wouldn't have come up with this. If it wasn't for the way that I felt about social media and how I felt closed off and what happened to me with this T-shirt, like somebody's always telling me what I can and can't say. I try, you try to do something and they're saying, oh, you can't right. do anything. So you, right. get, you get up those, the guts and the momentum right. to do something right. and they're like, oh, you can't do that. Right. Because it goes against my business model right. or something else. I'm right. like, well, I don't want to be part of this, right? Yeah. So, so uh, I was like, I miss physical media. It's not coming back. The CDs are gone. I have a stack of CDs in there that I can't sell quickly because nobody has a CD player right anymore. And uh, and I love print media, you know, and people like shirts and stickers and whatnot so uh, you know i decided to make a a product out of out of these things and merge the two things together so link merch is merchandise with an embedded qr code in the artwork or off to the side right and uh and a t-shirt of it but it, we're working on other things we have other things in the works too but that's good enough Right there. I mean, so, I think I've seen, I think I've seen one of your po uh, stickers around town. There's a sticker yeah. called 420. Take me down to Funky Riverside. No, that's that's yours. Oh, that's you're, mine. You're my second customer, actually. <laughs> 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 well, I got news for you, man. That thing really works because I started putting those around town. Yeah. People take the cameras, flash it. That song is now jumped way up. Take me down to Funky Riverside yeah, by my that's band. That's great. I'm glad to hear it's that. It's jumped right up there on uh, you know on streams because yeah. of this link merch stuff you got going yeah yeah man that's great i'm glad to hear that and it, it's 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 such a unique and new mode of discovery yeah right 
So it gives you a different relationship to the music because, um, so, so I have backing up a little bit. Another thing that I noticed, another very important pillar in the building of this, right. Was that I would, uh, people would share links with me. You could send me a link. I have every intention of clicking on it. And then I get three or more text messages and then I never go back to it. Right. right? It makes sense. Another thing is you could send me a link. You, you share with me your song. I love it. I love it. I love listening to it. I was like, that's fascinating. I never go back to it. Yeah. Because there's just const, the yes. constant stream of stuff coming out. It's me. like waves at a beach. You're a yeah. surfer. You're going to grab that wave, surfer. You're going to grab that wave, but then it's done. You're going to look for the next wave. Right. Exactly. That's right. That's a perfect way of putting it. And, and the, the thing about this is that when, so when you have something on a physical medium and, and on top of that, there's exclusivity involved which you can't just go anywhere online and listen to it, right? Uh, it's going to stick around more in a different way, you know? And, um, and definitely this product, it's not for everybody. It's got like just the way that golf clubs are not for everybody. Like, you know, it's a huge industry and only people who are interested in that. So I, only people who are interested in music are going to be interested in this. And the fly-by-night people who, if that's how you say it, the Sunday drivers of music or whatever, the people who are just like casual listeners – they're, they're probably not interested in this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, but as an artist, it is so much fun to have control over my medium. Okay? Yeah. And then not only that, but also to actually make more money yeah. than in the first, let's say, two months of the year yeah. than I made yeah. the entire yeah. past yeah. year. Yeah. Which is not a lot of money still. Yeah, yeah. Then COVID hit yeah. and then everything's right. on, on, on hold. Uh-huh. Right, but the thing is, the poten- I saw the potential for it there, and I, and I was getting going, and I was getting going. So I'm, I'm, I'm just working on the back end stuff now, right? On tightening everything up that I can tighten up while this is going on, right? And uh, so uh, I have nothing but good things to say. Like for you, Mike, I have nothing but good things to say about you. <laughs> 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 I, have no- I have nothing but good things to say. You know, there's people like that in my life, you know, like yeah. Mike Lugo, the owner of um, yeah. the tasting room. Yeah. Nothing but good things yeah. to say about that yeah. guy, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's like, it, and there, but this is one of those things, like this link merch thing. And people could think, some people could think it's stupid and some people do, right? But, you know, Facebook is stupid. It's like a lot of things are stupid. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, what do but you... But it's not a question of it's stupid. It's, if it's stupid, it makes money. That's the important thing. Right, <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying it has a purpose. It has a purpose and it's no. fun. And if you love right. print media right. and if you love music yeah. and if you love original content right. and, and, and... No, dude, one of the greatest things that came out of Link Merch was the t-shirt. I think it's called Amazing Shirts. Yeah. You know, I was once lost, yeah. but now yeah. I'm found. I love yeah. that t-shirt. I'm buying some for my kids. Yeah. If I go to a festival, I go somewhere, a circus or something, I've got that shirt because that shirt has a UR code. A U- QR code. A QR yeah. code. Yeah. A QR code that if my kid gets lost, now think about this. Yeah. Okay. Someone is immediately going to look at that shirt and say, this QR, grab the QR code and yeah. it's going to gra- and see, oh, and that QR, QR code is going to pop up my phone. I'm going to call me and say, hey, listen, I got your kid over here. The most yeah. critical time when a kid's lost is the first 10, 15 minutes. Because why? Because he's you're freaking sitting, the hell out. He's freaking the hell out of there. Both of you. And not only that, but, if, but you have some goddamn pervert, okay, a pedophile says, oh, I'll take him to the... Uh, to the lost and found, okay? And he never gets to the lost and found. But if some guy with a camera sees this, said, fuck this, excuse me. He says, yeah. let me get this QR code, snap yeah. it, I got your kid, right. son, you stay right here, your parents can be here in two minutes. Yeah. I love that idea. Yeah, I'm not gonna have to do a commercial for that at the beginning of the show. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking I was doing, I was gonna do a commercial for yeah. today. But yeah, that, that the, the Link uh, shirt, the amazing shirt for kids, yeah. Yeah. that, the way that that works is that that QR code on the shirt is scannable, yeah. and then it gives you some buffer of yeah. privacy over your your information. Yeah, and now so that, you put the phone over yeah, it, and yeah. it and it automatically yeah. uh, shows up to call the person, like right. the, the phone number. It gives you the option. Yeah, right. It's like call or text. Yeah, right. So, so you know, it's a it's a nifty neat it's, thing, and I love coming up with different ways to communicate like that different little hacks like we have so much technology already and so many things so much infrastructure so much clutter so so we have so much stuff that we we can probably come up with endless combinations 
of things to fix everything with. Right. Like right. we do not need a new yeah. whatever. Right. <laughs> you know, right. Yeah. like for example, people, why are people working on electric vehicles? Right. Because the way that our lifestyle is, we're accustomed to getting in our car and going wherever we want, whenever we want to go, mm -hmm. we want to go there. Mm -hmm. And that is a hundred percent brand new. It's an, it's a fetus. It's an infant of an idea in the scale of how things have been for, for humanity. Right. Right. And, uh, and you see what happens yeah. with it. So when you have a pandemic, right. And the whole world shuts down is because of how interconnected we are and how much we can travel yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so it has its, its pros and its cons, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And, um, so anyhow, I don't know how I got to that from, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. But yeah. Uh, so what you're doing as a, as a businessman entrepreneur yeah. is trying to cut through the clutter and find the essentials that people really, really need. And by, by hacking the word you like, the current media that we have, the technology we have, to make it more effective and more useful without having to be hijacked by yeah, the third party. Yeah, to be, to be creative with it and yeah. to be creative about it. And one of the most valuable things for me as a musician, the link, what the link merch has offered me, is that I'm actually excited to work on music because it's, yeah. it's discouraging. Yeah to work on something for six months yeah. and then you put it out there and you get a hundred thousand plays, let's yeah. say, and then that brings you nothing. Yeah. You like break even, right? Because yeah. of the fee to distribute it yeah. and et cetera. And so it's a discouraging thing, yeah. right? Cause this is how you're trying to make a living. Yeah. Right? I, 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 I'm, 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 so it, it's encouraging because it gives me control over my art form and yeah. Printed art, Artwork on the internet does yeah. not mean the same thing as artwork in, in the real world. I totally get it. I love that about you it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yeah. I, we're speaking to musicians here, our other artists as well, because I love the fact, I mean, okay, I guess I can say TuneCore, right? Uh, it doesn't matter. Dude, CD Baby. Yeah. Did you hear the news about them? No. They just well, closed their store. Did they? Do you have music on there? No, I have a TuneCore. Why did CD Baby close their store? They closed their downloads. Why? Because nobody's downloading music. There you go. They close their downloads and they close their CD store. Yeah, about that. Just closed. Well, yeah. Well, the same way with uh, you know a tune car. How would you like to be in a business and say, okay, I'd like to be in a business where someone says, hey, give me twelve dollars and I'll give you six dollars back. Oh yeah, I, I want to do that. I mean, what kind of business model is that for a, yeah. for a consumer? Hey man, I got a service here. Give me twelve dollars. I'm going to give you six dollars back. Oh yeah, okay, I'm all for that. That's what it's like. I got to pay them twelve dollars a month to get six dollars back on my look. My songs do pretty well on on there, but they're not million streams or they're not hundred thousand streams, but they do well. But I'm not even getting back my twelve dollars. Okay, that I'm having to pay. The, and you, you know that most of the people that are on there are people whose, whose streams don't even approximate getting $12, uh, what is it, a year? Right. You know, yeah. I, I mean, really, because you're getting a third of a penny, all right? A right. third of a penny. And you would have to have, I can't do the math, but you'd have to do an enormous amount of streams you to would make that need, money back. Um, you would need about uh, a thousand streams to make... Um, no, you would need more than that. You need more than that. Yeah, you need, yeah. Yeah, you need, yeah, you need more, more than that. that. Let's just say you're getting a third of a penny, right? So you would have uh, 30,000 streams, okay, just to make, um, just to make... Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't do the math on yeah. it, but I know the, the math that I did for Link Merch was right. like a, a thousand, at least a thousand plays to make mm -hmm. up for the sale of one sticker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a huge deal. Yeah. Nobody's going to listen to your song for a thousand times, especially in this climate, like I was describing right. to you, where I never go back to listen to it. Right. right. So there's also, for the musician, there's also um, the phenomena of, which is a natural phenomena of like selling and buying stuff. Right. Is the uh, um, purchase justification. Right. Which is that when you invest in something, it means something more to you yeah. than just like, yeah. oh, here's my song. You yeah. can listen to it wherever you want yeah. for free. Yeah. For free. Yeah. People throw it in the trash. Yeah. Now, I, did, I just did the math. You'd have to have 30,000 streams okay. to make a dollar. 
thirty thousand strings to, to make, make a dollar. dollar, right? Just in math. That's crazy. So, right? yeah, yeah, so I mean, who's going to get thirty thousand? So you got twelve dollars. You paying them twelve. So it means you'd have to have uh, ten times. So you'd have to be at three hundred thousand streams to make up your yeah. uh, to make up. Your, your, yeah, you know what? You, you know what? Screw this. Let, I'm turning this into an infomercial. Yeah. The the um, <laughs> and the thing is, because I'm passionate about it, yeah. you know. And the thing is, uh, I'll tell you, Mike. Uh, another uh, one of the things I'm telling you, a bunch of reasons to love it, right? It's like another thing is that the way that that is set up is like a uh, feast or famine, right? So you're either getting mil a million streams a month and making a living yeah, or you're not. You're not, right? right. And the thing is, so what about all of the artists It's that the new great? money changes, man, right. in the temple. Christ, you know, Jesus Christ threw them out. Well, Goliath Flores is throwing them out. He's okay. the new Jesus Christ <laughs> throwing out the money changes in the Woo, temple. That's heavy. <laughs> That's a lot of responsibility there, you know, but the thing is like the, the, uh, the, the musicians that have, let's say a thousand fans Yeah. in the streaming world, those thousands of fans mean nothing right, to me. Right, right, right. I mean, they mean something to me, Yeah, yeah. But, okay. but it doesn't translate through their medium. Right, right. So let's say link merch, yeah. a thousand fans, a thousand of my yeah. fans buy some of my link merch. Yeah. Guess what? I made a significant amount of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, right. right, exactly. A thousand streams, yeah. Yeah. I am making nothing. Yeah, 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 no, no, you, you're, you know. you're, you're finding a way to compress the relationship between you and your fan yeah. and monetize it in a more effective way. Yeah. I'm all for it, dude, and I love it. Yeah, and, it you know, and, and it, and it's, 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 it's making it more local. You know, you hear about local food, local, you know what I'm saying, local yeah. grown, all that stuff. It's, it's the local grown, local food, model of the music business i'm all for it man dude i can't tell you what a pleasure it's been oh you gotta go uh, this time i'm just getting buzzed here and it's uh i got the phone oh are you oh, you got, I, I you got, got the, the triple a thing my legs going on. you got the triple a thing excite me as oh there you go just tell them to keep calling yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah yeah mike but um, no it's been great yeah man, man so you, i mean you have a you know you have a band is there anything that you would like to tell people about uh, a few yeah words when i when i when i yeah you know just uh when I uh, subscribe to Link Merch, uh, be prepared to pay me some bucks because I'm going to go to Link Merch. No, yeah. Ample Anks is the name of the band. I also got a book called uh, um, um, A Devil's Tale of Love and Redemption. It's on Kindle. It's gotten some great reviews. Quirky, satirical tale about today's times. And um, that's it, man. And uh, what's, the name, what's the title of the book again? A Devil's Tale of Love and Redemption. It's on Kindle. Yeah. And... Uh, it's gotten some good reviews. It's a quirky, satirical tale. And what is I, the synopsis? Synopsis is that I take the concept of the devil as a construct of the Catholic or Christian church that says, hey, the devil's bad and evil, and basically use him, juxtapose him, and make him good in a world where what appears to be good is bad. I mean, look, you got the Catholic church. It's basically institutionalized pedophilia. I mean, they've, they've institutionalized pedophilia for the last 40 years, and somehow it's still in existence. Well, that, I mean, can you imagine all those poor kids that were being sodomized by these priests, and yet, I mean, that's supposed to be good? No, that's bad. And so the devil really becomes a construct of, of good, representing good, because what he does, he asks you to think for yourself, and he rejects ideology, and demagoguery or uh, ideology and um, uh, uh, anyway just uh, which which you're told to believe through through ideology and um, and what is th what people say is uh, you know the truth and he asks you to question everything and to think for yourself so that's what he stands for you know think for yourself and uh, and find out these what's you know and, and look through some of the things that that, that appear to be um, um, the people t are selling you as uh, as good. Anyway, so it's so a, what you're it's so what you're saying what you're saying is like the the concept of the devil is uh, let's say through the Catholic Church has been put through a prism and it bends the light. It's right. been in, it's been in the light. Yeah. So you take that away, and the, the they just attributed all of these things to to that. Character. Right, the devil is is is, right. is 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 a concept created by the church to say if you don't listen to our ideology, 
Yeah. Or, it's a fascinating a dogma. subject. It's a fascinating subject. Dogma. Yeah. That's the word I was yeah. looking for. The dogma. Then you're going to be, the devil's going to get you. You know, you're going to go to hell and burn. Well, that's just simply not true. You know, in this case, the devil's saying, the devil was ostracized because he, he's, he's disputing the church. He's having you think for yourself. Well, I take that and say, what's wrong with that? Thinking for yourself and, and, and questioning dogma and ideology. Right, but you, you yeah. can't, like, uh, you can talk like that, and I agree. You can talk like that uh, because it's 2020, right? But yeah. if, you, yeah. if you roll the <laughs> clock back. Yeah, yeah, I'd be hung up. I'd be, 60 years. I'd be drawn and quartered. Oh, the yeah. 16th century, yeah. Yeah, it's no. fascinating. It's yeah. fascinating because it, yeah. brings up, it brings up the yeah. whole topic of, yeah. like, uh, where, w- what is the Bible? Where does it come from? Who wrote it? It's a series of books put together. And, and it's curated, and, 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 and a very you know, there's many books that didn't even see the light of day that are that questioned some of the other books. You know, I mean, it was like it's like both sides of the coin that the, the Bible was drawn from. But they said, oh no, because what happened in, in I think in the sixth century, um, Constantinople, the leader of the Catholic Church. It's the fact, the leader of the uh, the Roman Empire. I think it was it was Constantinople. He got everybody to say, man, this, this movement of Christianity is growing, growing, growing. And if we don't do something about it, it's going to erode all our power. So Constanti- Constantinople did. He convened all everybody, all the leaders in the, in this, the council of whatever it was called. It's Constantine? Constantine. Constantine. No, King Constantine. Constantine. Yeah, yeah. Constantine. Thank you. And um, in the, the council of Constantinople or something. And he brought them all together, and they basically said they co-opted the Catholic Church. They took the myth and the beliefs of all those Christians that were living off of, you know, what you know, the legend and the myth that Christ had created that was being being told through stories. They co-opted it and said, "We're going to now make it our religion, and we're going to." When you say you co-opt something, you're taking it. And you're making it your own, and you're now going to become the leaders of that movement and determine and have the power. And that's exactly what they did. And that's what the Catholic Church did. And they created this thing where at that point, at that point to the sixth century, Jesus wasn't even considered a deity. He wasn't considered a God. He was just considered a man who was saying that, you know. The spiritual light, you know, God was found in your body. You know, it used to be that the the Hebrews said that, you know, the afterlife is where you find God. Christ was saying, no, the spirit and the fruition of the the spirit is found here now. Right. And heaven is on earth. Heaven is on earth. Yeah. And the kingdom. Yeah. And yeah. But he, he, you know, and then and but he did, you know, but then the Constantine said, wait a minute here. He, Constantine made him into a deity. Constantine said that he was the son of Christ. So all the stuff you're reading that Jesus said, he, he, didn't, he didn't say that stuff. It was just that Constantine started interpreting it that way. And they took the power. And that's how the church became, you know, the big powerful factor it is. So, I mean, not to, not to be cheeky, but uh, the that church like that whole thing that we were you're just talking about it's like you know how we were talking about the interface yeah. with all the options right yeah, yeah. this is this is how yeah. this is how the psychological yes what they did has been constructed here's your options yeah <clears throat> yeah and so same thing. It, so there's a you can have uh, our jesus and what he stands for or you can have these people but they're wrong ours is right yeah yeah that's that's and now uh, who's gonna who's gonna question that the antithesis of that, you got to have a devil. You have to have the counterpart that says, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I don't believe that. I'm going to ask you to question this. Who says you're the right? What made you king? Well, Constantine said, I'm, I'm the king. I th- what I say is right. What I say is right. Man, you got to hear, you got to hear this podcast episode. And you know what? We're going to do, I, I can tell that we're going to do more of these if you want to come back. Yeah. We can do more, many more of yeah. these. Uh, but you got to hear this podcast episode from Dan Carlin called Prophets of Doom. And it's still free. They're free for like two years, yeah. Okay, and then and then you have to pay for them. But it's about uh, Martin Luther. Okay, yeah, and how? Luther. Yeah, Martin Luther, and yeah. he's in Germany, yeah, and right, and, right. Uh, and then he, he broke off from the Catholic Church. Well, he translated yeah. all. He translated the Bible. Yeah, so everybody could read it. Right, and before nobody could read it. Right, everybody only the priests yeah, at could the read church it. Yeah, could read it. it. Exactly. Yeah, 
Yeah, and that, can you imagine what that, that was, well, that was the like story that. is amazing. Well, what does the story say? Uh, it says this. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm reading it. It doesn't say, no, I'm reading it. Believe me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> can't read it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Man, dude, it's been great. A lot of fun. Excellent. A lot of fun, man. I would shake your hand, but Yeah, I can't. no, no, man. I appreciate we got the six <laughs> feet distance between us, man. It was a lot of fun, Goliath. Yeah, man. Thank you so much, man, for having me on. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you for yeah. coming, man. Yeah, all right. Cheers. Hey, what's up? I would love for you to go over and visit a couple of URLs. If you can go visit linkshirt.net, that would be great. Check it out. Tell me what you think. Go to amazingshirts.net. Tell me what you think. Go to linkmerch.us or .org. Tell me what you think. You know, um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to get some feedback from some of the people that listen to this podcast. And you can also go to my website and hit the tip button and donate. If you don't want to buy anything that I'm selling, but I think you do want to buy something that I'm selling because it's pretty cool stuff. All right. I'll see you all later.